All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. It's me, Addy, again, and I hope you guys are absolutely killing it. Today, I'm going to be giving you my review of Hollow Knight. A week or so ago, I rolled the credits of the game and got the first ending, even though I still have so much of the game left to complete. I've still got a lot of endings, side quests, and DLC content to finish up on in order to 112% this game, and I simply can't wait to continue because I'm just going to come out and say it right now, this game has been an absolute blast to play. Hollow Knight is easily one of the greatest indie games I've played to date, and I honestly cannot believe I slept on this for so long, which, by the way, funny story, I quite literally did uh, when I first played this game because I did so on an airplane. I know the absolute worst way to experience this gem of the game for the very first time. No joke, I pretty much passed out playing just because of how bad the turbulence was in the airplane and the incredibly bad headache that I was getting. And when you combine the fact that this game is all about using your brain to think about where to go next, and the fact that I was playing this on an airplane on a Nintendo Switch screen, that shit happens. <laughs> but yo, upon the request of a wonderful member of my community, Flamin Phoenix 01, shout out there, I decided to give this game another shot. And boy oh boy, I'm really glad that I did. Hollow Knight has quickly found a spot amongst my favorite indie games of all time, those being Stardew Valley and Dead Cells. It takes everything that I personally love about video games, solid level design, incredible boss fights, and excellent storytelling, and blends them all together within this amazing Metroidvania setting. And on top of that, the game has a beautiful soundtrack. I loved going through each and every meticulously crafted biome of this game, getting lost, and discovering new things, all the while listening to the mesmerizing tracks that overlaid each area. An amazing experience for sure. With the game's cleverly interconnected levels, surprisingly challenging boss fights, and its cryptic yet thoroughly compelling approach to lore and world building, Hollow Knight is, to me, essentially a Souls-like game in the coolest way possible. A big part of my playthrough was actually pointing out several parallels between this game and Bloodborne, my second favorite game of all time, and it still amazes me how expansive and similar this really is to a Soulsborne title, especially when you consider that the game was made by only three people and is a pure indie platformer. And this last bit here should go without saying, but Hollow Knight is definitely the most beautiful looking platformer I've ever played. I just loved the cutesy visuals and beautifully illustrated levels in this game. And hey, the gameplay too was really neat here, and even though there wasn't really anything too groundbreaking when it came to the combat, since obviously there's really understandably no way at this point to reinvent the platformer combat wheel, one original mechanic that I nevertheless thought was really, really really cool was dream nailing. This is a mechanic that essentially allows you to read characters' minds, access secret areas, and way more, which really reminded me of one of my favorite games ever growing up, which was Golden Sun. That game too had a very similar mechanic where you could read the minds of NPCs to recontextualize conversations with them and gain a better understanding of their motives and overarching story. And speaking of the characters and story of Hollow Knight, both were done incredibly well. Hollow Knight is essentially a fable with its story being about various factions of walking, breathing, and talking bugs that all live underground. And much like a Souls title, it's up to your character to explore the ruins of their kingdom and piece together what exactly happened to the now desolate and melancholic world that you are exploring as you play. Now admittedly, I understood next to nothing about exactly what was going on in the game's story besides this basic premise, but that's totally okay. And that's because your first playthrough of any game with cryptic world building is going to be largely mystifying. And how well the game is able to make you feel interested in its story despite that, is what truly matters. And I can say with confidence that Hollow Knight does a wonderful job with that. So, overall, Hollow Knight to me, personally, is a 10 out of 10 game. Simply put, this game is a masterpiece with how it provides a fresh and original take on the Metroidvania experience and adapts bits and pieces of solid game design from big AAA titles by the likes of From Software. But now if I were to look at it a little bit more critically, it's easy to spot a few tiny blemishes with this otherwise shining diamond game. And one of those blemishes to me is the exploration and navigation, and I'll absolutely clarify what I mean by that. Throughout your experience playing Hollow Knight, you'll be constantly getting lost, needing to backtrack, and realizing that where you are is where you need to be later on, and which is all good, that's all amazing stuff. In fact, that's the fun of this game and a very big strength with its progression. 
This game never once holds your hand at any point, and I greatly appreciate that. However, when it does come to actually seeing where you are on your map if you're using the compass charm, things get a little wonky. The lack of calibration on the charm combined with the fact that the maps you get aren't incredibly detailed with outlines of where the platforms could be really can get a little tedious sometimes. There were more than a few occasions where I thought I was at the door to a certain exit to a level, but it turned out that I was at a wall somewhere completely different, all because my character icon on the map wasn't in the accurate spot. And another little thing about the game that I was slightly iffy on was the beginning. It definitely takes a while for Hollow Knight to open up and shine, and the first quarter of it can feel no different from a generic platformer. Admittedly, there were a few times where I was on the fence about whether or not I wanted to continue playing the game. But hey, in the end man, I'm so glad that I did. Eventually the game got so addicting, and I just wish that I had that energy to want to play it so badly from the very start. But again, that's just a very small pet peeve alongside the stuff I said about the navigation. Overall, Hollow Knight ended up being one of my favorite indie games of all time, and one that I can absolutely see myself replaying at some point in the future to do things like lore runs, deathless runs, and so so much more. Because 112%ing the game is just the start, and there are so many achievements, endings, and creative ways to play that await you. So my final rating for Hollow Knight from a critical standpoint is the highest 9 out of 10 that I can give it. Last I checked, the game was on sale, and I got it for like $8 I think, but honestly this game was so good that I would have paid so much more. So if you've got some change lying around and you want a fun little game that isn't so little in the grand scheme of things to play, you know what to do. Happy gaming. Thank you so much as always for watching this review video you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to subscribe for more weekly videos like this one, and follow me on twitch.tv slash irritableindian, that's where all the fun stuff happens. But until the next one, keep on keeping on.